friends and welcome back. Today I'm going to show you using Cricut how we're going to make our stencils for our powder coated project today. So you'll notice that I've already multiplied my bats and so I like to cut more than what I actually need. In order to do this to make these as stencils I went ahead and wrote up the saying that I wanted using a font within I think actually one that I downloaded from defont.com. So you can pick any saying any design and this should work perfectly fine. So what I'm trying to do here is make the box so that I can go ahead and attach these two together. And then when I cut it, I'm going to go ahead and weed out its freaking bats as well as my bats in order to have my stencil. Now you can do this by just slicing, but you can only slice two images at a time. If you use the slice method, you won't have to weed it because it'll already be cut out for you. But I went ahead and just attached everything together and then I'm gonna weed everything out and then we'll have our stencil. So once you have everything cut, this is what it's gonna look like once you've weeded it out and this is how it's gonna cut if you use the slice method. So now we're ready to go ahead and apply the stencil to the tumbler. I always start with my largest piece as my focal point and then the bats are gonna work around to where they make sense. Comes to the vinyl stenciling, you really just wanna make sure that you don't have any wrinkles or air pockets near or around your actual image. If the wrinkles and air pockets are starting to gather at the edges because this is a tapered tumbler, that is okay as long as it's not near your actual design. So when it comes to placing the decals as your stencil, just be mindful, take your time and work it out because once this tumbler is etched, there's no going back. So once you're ready and you have everything nice and rubbed down and secured to your tumbler, you can go ahead and remove your contact sheet and continue decorating as you see fit. So for my design, I actually chose to do an offset. So I need to go ahead and remove the inside parts of each letter per the design for my offset. So you'll see here very soon as to why I went ahead and removed these particular sections. Once this step is complete, then I go ahead and add my bats to where it makes sense onto the tumbler. Once you have all of your stencils in place, we are now ready to move forward. And I am so excited to finally be working on this project as I've finally gotten everything that I've needed. I did purchase my tumblers from Amazon, so you can click on the Amazon link to find where I got these. They are already holographic, which I absolutely love. And as you can see that I am being very cautious and careful to not get this on any parts as to where I don't want it to etch. So just take your time and it and, and believe it or not, a little bit goes a very long way. Once I was able to get all the gel applied to my stencils, I then just set this tumbler aside, kept track of the time. At the one hour and 30 minute mark, everything started to bubble up and I knew then that this was ready. What I love by this clip is that you can really start to see a little bit of the holographic effect from the actual tumbler. So I set the water to as much as I could tolerate with the heat and just let that pretty much shower off on all of the bits to kind of get as much off as I could without touching it. Once I let the water do most of the work, I then came in with my Dawn dish soap and really kind of helped it out. And then I brought in a scrubby to really get into those intricate sections, if you will. So just after a few minutes of scrubbing with continuous hot water that you can tolerate, it's then time to go ahead and remove the vinyl from the tumbler. So once I had all of my vinyl removed and this was super clean, I then noticed that some of my lines were not as sharp as I would like. Now, it didn't really matter as much because I was gonna go over this with an offset. However, 
Um, if, if, if you wanted to leave this as is and not have to apply epoxy, just take your, the very tip of your X-Acto knife and just kind of scrape along those edges. I couldn't show as much as I would have liked to because of the glare that I didn't realize until now when I'm doing my voiceover. So I apologize for that. Please keep in mind though, when you're going through the cleanup phase here at this point, this is not requiring a great deal of pressure. And basically what is not meant to come up won't, if that makes sense. So once I had most of my lines tightened up, I was then ready to go in with my offset. This is a Banff Custom Creations beautiful tealish blue that I thought would really just pop off of this holographic. So that's what I'm using currently for my offset, which I absolutely love. So I'm going to show you, okay, so first of all, I have to mention, um, my daughter actually called when I was in this exact process and it startled the crap out of me. So I want to point out that I am sorry for my phone being part in the camera, but in this particular moment, I like stopped breathing because I was startled and let loose of my, um, contact sheet. And so, uh, at this moment, uh, yeah, I thought I had screwed up. I thought I was going to have to recut, but I didn't. I took my time and I was able to rectify this decal offset. So that's why I decided to keep this section in, even though you can see my cell phone in the corner. So again, I apologize for that. But in a lot of cases, this has to be peeled up and replaced. But again, I just wanted to show you that I was able to work it out. And at the end of the day, I loved it. So because I chose to do an offset using vinyl, I decided that I'm gonna go ahead and epoxy this tumbler. Now you don't have to, it's not necessary, but do keep in mind over time, the vinyl will eventually start to peel up and come off and you'll just have what you started off with with the edge. So for this, I wanted to go ahead and leave the top and the bottom as is and I decided to not epoxy the entire tumbler. So I'm just going to tape off using electrical tape so that I could then go in with my fast set from Counterculture DIY, really working in those sweet spots. And the sweet spots are where it's been etched and where the tape meets the tumbler. I want to point out that I had no issues whatsoever with my epoxy adhering to this tumbler. And in fact, I only needed one coat of epoxy. I did not need to go in with a second coat, which I was super thrilled about. It was, at the end of the day, very smooth and everything came together flawlessly. And as always, with epoxy, make sure you use your heat torch to pop any bubbles that you may or may not be able to see. Make sure you set a timer for 15 minutes to come back in and remove your tape. Times may vary depending upon the epoxy that you're using. So I want to mention while I'm removing this tape that it has never failed me that when I tape off the top and or bottom rim, I always have this little annoying epoxy line that has gotten up underneath my tape. I immediately, once I remove the tape, I take a baby wipe and just clean that up. I do not wait for it to cure. I clean it up while it's still wet. Therefore, I don't have an issue once this has cured. So here is the purple holographic tumbler made exactly with the same techniques as I just shared with you, except this one is a no epoxy option. So if you're sensitive to epoxies, you can simply etch your tumbler and leave it as is. So in literally less than two hours, you can have a beautiful, flawless, professional looking tumbler to call your own. Of course, this is the one that I just did for the tutorial. I absolutely love the way that this turned out. And if you look very close to the bottom edge, as well as the top edge, you will see that this is a very, very thin coat of epoxy. So which means though, because the bottom nor the top has been epoxied, if they drop it, it's going to be like any other that they would purchase from the store. They would just dent the bottom and not necessarily crack the epoxy coat. 
This is also an excellent alternative. And again, I did use the Fast Set from Counterculture DIY. So in about three and a half hours, this tumbler was complete. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Leave me a comment down below on which Tumblr is your favorite. Do you love the black holographic and or the purple? If you enjoyed this tutorial and you found it very helpful, please like this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials coming soon.